fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus Christ and Muhammad are the closest in history to one another. In history to one another. And Jesus Christ is made to say, I refer to you about the Gospel of St. John. Now, in the Holy Quran, in Surah Saf, Saf, you find that and the S, Saf, chapter 61, verse 6. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ is made to say, وَإِذْ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَا Behold, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, يَا بَنِ إِسْرَائِيلَ O children of Israel, إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ Most certainly, I am the messenger of God, sent to you all, you Jews. رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ جَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ Confirming the revelation which came before me in the Torah. وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ And giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. He prophesied about the coming of our holy prophet Muhammad And this prophecy is still there in the Christian Bible. It is still there. Despite the fact that his words are not preserved as a whole. Despite the fact only 10% of the New Testament are the words of Jesus according to what they have, what they say, what they claim. 90% is nothing to do with, no, is not the words of Jesus. 90%. Still, this prophecy is still there. Where? I was showing it to an Egyptian lady. See, I was in March, I was in Egypt. I had some visa problem. I won't go into details. A man from the al Azari failed. So he brings an Egyptian lady, well attired, westernized lady, well spoken, and he says, this lady will help you. So, she tried and she failed. So she tells me, look, sit for half an hour and I will try and see what I can do for you. She returns after over an hour and says, I want $40. I said, look, I'm a guest of the government. He said, look, $40. 20 for you, 20 for your son. I give her the $40. She was so well spoken, so I'm asking her, my smuki, what well, little I know, a few words about Arabic. I said, my smuki, what is your name? So she gave me a name. I can't remember because it was so strange to me. Now I never heard a name like that in my life. It went through one side, came out the other side. <laughs> my second question. I said, Anta Muslima? Are you Muslim? She says, no, I'm a Christian. I said, right, right. To me, she's my customer. Look, this is what the Muslim ought to be doing, looking for customers. Every Muslim, you know one fact? Look for a customer, for that one fact. Our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, he said, Balligwani wa aya. Deliver the message regarding me, even if it is one verse. If you know one fact, give it, man, give it. And Allah will give you more. This is the secret of knowledge. If you have one, you give. That one, you keep on giving. And Allah adds another, and another. And your knowledge explodes, expands. This is the secret of learning. Give, man, give. So I said, now here's an opportunity. I said, you know, knowing now she's a Christian and she's an Egyptian, so I said, you know Jesus, before he parted, he said, لَكِنِّي أَكُولُ لَكُمُ الْحَقُّ إِنَّهُ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِنْ أَنْتَلِكَ لِأَلَّهُ إِلَّا مَنْ تَلِكْ لَا يَعْتِيكُمُ الْمُؤَزِّ وَلَكِنْ إِنْ زَهَبْتُ أُرْسِلْهُ إِلَيْكُمْ I didn't translate it for her, because she understood what I said. For your benefit, what I said was, I quoted her from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 7, where it says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. That's what I quoted her in Arabic. So I'm asking her, who is this Mu'azzi? La yati kumul Mu'azzi. So she says, I don't know. So I'm telling her, I said, you see, in the Quran we are told that Jesus said to his disciples, وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ And giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. And Muhammad is Mu'azzi. She says, very funny. She says, you know these Egyptians, meaning the Muslim Egyptians, did they, did they take us to the cinema? Did they take us to the dance? But nobody tells us about Mu'azzi. She gave me a sledgehammer to beat the Muslims with. Look, she says, these Egyptians, means your Muslim brothers, they take us to the cinema, this Christian woman, you take them to the cinema, you take them to the dance. And you know from there where you go. 
But nobody tells us about Muazzi. So now as soon as I get into the city, I meet this elite, elite Egyptian brothers of ours. And I'm telling them, I said, look, I met an Egyptian woman just now. A meticulous person, very well educated. And this is what she tells me, that you take them to the cinema, you take them to the dance, but you te don't tell them anything about Muazzi. Is it true? And they say, yes. Our brother and say, yes. Ask another girl. I say, is it true? He said, yes. Everyone you ask, is it true? What she says, he said, yes. So what's wrong with you? 1,400 is you are there, the Muslim. In Egypt, he's ruling, he's the master. For a few years, the British were there. They were masters. For a few years, the French were there. But overall, for 1,400 years, the Muslim is master of Egypt. Overall, 1,400 years. And in 1,400 years, you have not made even a scratch on the Christian community. I want to know why. Even now, are you prepared to talk to them? No. Utterly helpless. 40 million Muslims in Egypt, they're utterly helpless, speechless. They can't talk to the Christians. They can't. I want to know why. I'm asking them. I say, you? You Muslims? I say, you read the Quran? In your own mother tongue? He said, yes. I say, you understand what you read? He said, yes. I said, look, my people. You, whether pa Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Hindi, my people. The non-Arab, all my people. I said, you see, my people, they read the Quran, but they don't understand what they read. But you, you understand what you are reading? He said, yes. So I said, Allah is telling you. He's telling us all, but because we don't understand, for us it's a water on duck's back. But as he's telling you, you Egyptians, Ya Ahlal Kitab, O people of the book, La taghlu fi dinikum. So, O people of the book, meaning O Jews and Christians, La taghlu fi dinikum. Say, do not go to extremes in your religion. Wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al haq. And don't say anything about Allah except the truth. Innam al Masih, most certainly the Messiah, translated Christ. Innam al Masih, O Isa ibn Maryama, Jesus the son of Mary, Rasulullah, is a messenger of Allah, wa kalimatuhu, and a word proceeding from him, al qaha ila Maryam wa ruhum minhum, which he bestowed upon Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. Fa aminu billahi wa rusulihi, so believe in Allah and his messenger, Jesus. Did you tell them that? He says, no. The Egyptians are telling me no. I say, Allah tells you. He says, tell them. Wala taqulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. In tahu khairul lakum. This is stop it. It will be better for you. Innam Allahu ilahu wahid. For your Allah is one Allah. He is not three in one. He is not one in three. I said, did you tell them that? He says, no. I said, Allah tells you in the Quran. Lakat kafar al-lazina qalu inna Allah wal masih ibn Maryam. Anyone who says that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, is making kufr. It's an act of blasphemy. It's treason against God. Waqal al-masih, but Christ. Waqal al-masih, but Christ said, Masih said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, La'budullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who is my Lord and your Lord, innahu man yushrik billah, whoever will associate anyone with Allah, faqad harram Allah alil jannah, Allah will make jannah haram for them, wa ma'wahu nar, and the fire of hell will be the dwelling place, wa ma'liz zalimina min ansar, and for the wrongdoers there will be no one to help. I said, did you tell them that? He says, no. Allah tells you, pull, tell them, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, ta'ala, come. Ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum, that we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get out to a common platform. An la na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah, wa la nushrika bihi shay'an, and that we associate no partners with him, wa la yattakhiza ba'dun abadun arbaban min duni Allah, and that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fa in tawallaw, but if they turn back, fa kulu shahadu bi anna muslimun, tell them that we are Muslims, we have submitted our wills to the will of Allah. I said, did you tell them? Did you call them ta'ala? I said, no. I want to know why. I say, you read this, you understand what you're reading, Allah is telling you, and you don't hearken. Is this applicable to us? Deaf, dumb, and blind, you will not return to the past. Is it applied to, to us? What is it? Are you deaf? Are you dumb? Why is it that you can't open your mouth? 
They don't know. Wallah, they don't know. I'm asking the Egyptians, how is it that 1400 years you haven't opened your mouth and even now you're not prepared to do? I want to know why. I tell you why. The secret. The secret. You see, the secret is Allah gives you. Wallah, He's given everything to us. Nobody really reads the Quran. We have half of the Quran. Qaris, yes. We rattle off the whole Quran without the slightest mistake. But we don't understand one word. Many of us. Not one word. Whole Quran we carry in our heads. But we don't understand one word. It's an amazing situation. It's a miracle. But it's a unique disgrace. Allah. You know the whole Quran? We can rattle it off. The Arab can't understand. If you sit there on the Kaaba and you're reading the Quran. You're reading the Quran. He's listening. He's, Mashallah. Hey, better than many Arabs. This is, he wants to talk to you. <laughs> you can't speak. You mean to say you can read this book, whole book, and you can't, you can't even say, give me a glass of water? You know that? You can't even say, give me a glass of water, I'm thirsty. You know that if you're dying, you can't say, ma, ma. <laughs> Amazing situation. What is the reason? Why can't you do the job? I tell you why. I said, you see, Allah gives you elementary no, elementary secret. He says, وَقَالُوا And they say, the Jews and the Christians, they say, that you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah unless unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. That's what the Jews were telling the early Muslims. That you want to follow this Ummi Prophet, this illiterate man. He doesn't know how to read or write. You follow him. He's going to misguide you, man. You want to go to heaven? You follow us. The Christians say, you want to go to heaven? You follow us. So Allah says in answer to that, Tilka amani yuhum, this is their wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucinations. This is the hallucination. Kul, tell them, Hatu burhanakum, produce your proof, your certificate that entitles you to heaven and destines us to hell. Let's have a look at your certificate. That is the secret. Hatu burhanakum. Let's have a look. The very fact that Allah commands us to demand proof, it presupposes that when proof is produced, you will be able to analyze it. That's what it means. Once you start doing that, he hasn't got a leg to stand upon. Wallah. There he's got no chance against you. You have to now ask him for proof. But without you asking, he's provided you the proof. In 2,000 different languages. You know that? The Bible. He says, yeah, my Bible says this, my Bible says that. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. He's giving you free Bibles. You know that? There is a work afoot at the moment now. Shoros said on Sunday that 5,000 Bibles were shipped from America to be distributed at our meeting. Free. But he says they addressed it wrongly. It went somewhere else. <laughs> this is our last work. Our last work. <laughs> but still they'll reach you. Sooner or later they'll reach you. See, look, they're persistent. They have that persevering quality which we haven't got. They will persevere and they'll see that you get it. You were supposed to ask them for proof. Without you asking, they say, look, my Bible says this, my Bible says that. Now you're going to swallow that? No. What you do? When Allah commands us to demand proof, it presupposes that when proof is produced, we'll be able to analyze it. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Nonsense. Once you start analyzing it, you find he hasn't got a leg to stand upon. Things that he's telling you is not in his book. Whatever he's trying to teach you is not there. What you do? But get these little books. When you get the Bible, you need this book. As an instruction book, what to do with the Bible? Is the Bible God's word? Get it from the Islamic Propagation Center in Birmingham. Or start one here in Bradford. We will help you, inshallah. Start one here. That you can give literature. You master it, you study it, and you help your other brethren. And you share with other people. You don't sit on your backside doing nothing and waiting as a sitting duck, sitting target, using for people, the people to come and practice on you like a punching bag, boxing, practicing on you, using you as a doormat, eating our, drinking our tea, eating our samosas, and then making mess of us. Is that the role Allah has in store for us? No. He says, Allah says, the destiny of the Muslim and Islam is, is that you the hero who Allah deen kulli. He's given you a deen, there is a master, overcome and supersede them all. So, he it is who sent his messenger with guidance. 
and with the religion of truth, لِيُّزَ هِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ that it may prevail, overcome, and supersede every other deen, whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Communism, Judaism, every ism, Islam is destined to master them all, bulldoze them all. Bulldoze them all. You know bulldozer? You know how it works? I get fascinated when I see it moving mountains. That's you. Bulldoze them all. Say, Waqafa billahi shahida. And enough is Allah is a witness to this fact that he's going to make his deen to prevail with you or without you. But you rubbish, he's giving you and me that opportunity to serve his deen. To do a prophet's job and earn a prophet's reward. Will you take it? That's the question. Will you take that, that honor, that privilege? He wants you to do a prophet's job and earn a prophet's reward. Because if you do a prophet's job, Allah will be less to you if you do the manager's job and he pay you a sweeper's reward. Allah is not like that. Do a prophet's job, you get a prophet's reward. And that's your destiny. Bulldoze them all. Not with the gun, not with the grenade. If you had it, even if you had the laser gun, Allah forbids you using it. He says, there is no compulsion in religion. Like Rafi Deen. There is no compulsion in religion. Even if you had it, you can't use it. Because force means nothing. It's worthless. We have a few Christian brothers among us, a few non-Muslim among us, and listen, I will get you, come on. Mm -hmm. Say the kalima, the shahada, the creed of Islam. So what's that? Say, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Otherwise, we kill you. So the poor man says, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I'm asking you, what is it worth? Worthless, rubbish. Allah says, no, you can't do that. It must be willful acceptance, cooperation, willingness, getting together, fellowship of faith, get together. And this is the destiny of the Muslim, to do the job. And the way to do the job, you have to master his weapons, the weapon he's carrying, his book. You must know his book. Once you know his book, he is child's play in front of you. So with these words of my dear brethren, I want you to take this challenge up. It's a challenge. Islam is a challenge to them. And to us, the whole world is a challenge. We are destined to change the world for Allah. Not for ourselves, for Allah. And the way to do it is, you master the weapons of the enemy. Our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Al-hirbu khat'un, war is strategy, and strategy demands that you use the weapons of your enemy. And the weapon that he uses is the book, the Bible. You master the book, and go to town. Wa akhirul dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.